Hello my dear friends, I am Sujoy and I am back with a new series of tutorials for you where I am telling you how to do project management using network analysis. Well, this is my 11th video in the series. In my previous 10 videos, I have explained the project management from the very basic. I have explained some basic definitions regarding project management, how to draw a network diagram, then how to optimize the network diagram using dummy activity and my three videos on critical path method or CPM. So today we will talk about the program evaluation and review technique or PRT part. This is my second video on part. I have already uploaded one video on part. So please watch that video also to strengthen your concepts. Link to my all previous videos is given in the video description below. Part is also called project evaluation and review technique. So today we will learn how to draw a network diagram how to find out the critical path using shortcut technique, how to find out the minimum time needed to complete the project, how to find out the project standard deviation and how to find out the probability that the project will be completed within given timeline. I will tell you all of them. So let's start. So first look at the table which is given in the question. The table has five columns. Number one is the activity column which contains all the activity we need to draw the network diagram. Next, some predecessor activities. Predecessor activity means an activity which must be completed before another activity can start. For example, the activity A must be completed before the activity D can be started. So first we will consider only the activity column and the predecessor activity column to draw the network diagram. Later, we will incorporate rest of the values. So first we will start with drawing a circle. A circle represents an event. Let's give it a number, event 1. This is our starting event. All the activities starting from the starting event are called the starting activities. So here in the table you can see activities A, B and C don't have any predecessor activity. That means they are the starting activities. So we'll draw our activity A, B and C from event 1. Activities are represented using arrows. This is activity A, next activity B, and then activity C. And end of activity A is another event. Let's say it's event 2. End of activity B is also another event. It's event 3. And end of activity C is event 4. So we have drawn activity A, B, and C. Next activity D which has the predecessor activity A. That means A must be completed before D can start. So A is completed at event 2. So activity D will start from event 2. Let's draw activity D. End of D is event 5. Next activity is activity E. But there is a catch for drawing activity E. Before drawing any activity, just look at least three activities forward in the activity table and check whether the activity you are going to draw each predecessor activity or not of any upcoming activity. So here activity E is the predecessor activity of activity F along with activity D. That means activities D and E must be completed together before activity F can start. So in that kind of situation, use a little caution while drawing the network diagram. That also means activity D and activity E must converge or must be completed at an event and from that event, the activity F will start. So our activity D ends at event 5. So for the sake of simplicity, if we can merge the activity E at event 5, then we can draw activity F from event 5. So Activity E will start after B. So B ends at event 3. Activity E will start from event 3 and will end at event 5. Next activity F which has the predecessor activity of D and E. So both D and E ends at event 5. So activity F will start from event 5. Activity F ends at event 6. Next activity G which has predecessor activity B. 
v ends at event 3 so g will start from event 3 but then again g is the predecessor activity of i along with h so again we need a little caution end of activity g let's say at event 7 next activity h which has the predecessor of c but then again activity i has predecessor g and h both so our activity g ends at event 7 so if we can merge the activity h at event 7 activity i can start from event 7 so we'll merge the activity h at event 7 so since activity g and h both ends at event 7 we'll draw activity i from event 7 again the same rule activity i is the predecessor activity of j along with f and f ends at event 6 so we'll match the activity i at event 6 so since both the activity f and i ends at event 6 activity j will start from event 6 and it will end at event 7. So that's it. We have successfully completed drawing our network diagram which is similar to this one. Remember the event numbering may be different but the network structure and the order of activities is important. So after drawing the network next we will do some calculation. So here three values are given A, M and B where A is called the optimistic time. The optimistic time is the minimum time needed for an activity to complete if everything is alright in the project or it is the best case situation. So for example, optimistic time of A means the activity A requires one week to complete if everything is alright. This is the minimum time activity A can take. Optimistic time is represented using TO. Next is B or the pessimistic time. It is just opposite of the optimistic time. Pessimistic time is the maximum time needed for an activity to complete if everything is bad or not going well in the project. This is the worst case scenario. So pessimistic time of 1 for activity A means the activity A will take maximum 1 week of time if everything is going bad or in worst case situation. Pessimistic time is also represented using TP. And next is M in between A and B. M is called the most likely time. This is the average or general time needed for an activity to complete if everything is in between good and bad. This is the most likely time for an activity to complete. The most likely time is also represented using TM. So next we have to calculate the TE or the expected time of completion for each activity. So TE is calculated using this formula. TE equals to A plus 4M plus B by 6 or TE equals to optimistic time plus 4 into most likely time plus the pessimistic time divided by 6. Why 6? Because the weight or coefficient for A is 1, the weight for M is 4 and the weight or coefficient for B is 1. So 1 plus 4 plus 1 that's equal to 6. And we are dividing by 6 since we need an even or average value. So let's calculate the TE value for each activity using the formula. So the expected time for A is given by 1 plus 4 into 1 plus 1 by 6. So 1 plus 4 5 plus 1 6 by 6 that is 1. Similarly for activity B expected time is 1 plus 4 into 2 plus 3 divided by 6. So that is equals to 1 plus 4 into 2 8 plus 3 that is 12 by 6 equals to 2. Similarly you can calculate the expected time value for each activity. I have already calculated the values for you which is given in this column. Remember the T value is very important because we will incorporate the T values in our network diagram and also 
we'll do all our remaining calculations using the TE value. Next, we'll calculate the variance value, which is represented using sigma i whole square. This symbol is called sigma. And the variance, the formula is variance equals to b minus a by 6 whole square. The variance equals to pessimistic time minus the optimistic time by 6 whole square. So using the formula, the variance for activity A is given by 1 minus 1 by 6 whole square. 1 minus 1 0 by 6 is 0 whole square. So 0 square is 0. Similarly, for activity B, the variance is equals to 3 minus 1 by 6 whole square. That is 3 minus 1 2 by 6 whole square. That's equals to 0 0.11. So using the formula, you can easily calculate the variance value for each activity. I have already calculated the variance value for each activity which is given in this column. So since we have calculated the T value for each activity, now we will incorporate the values in the network diagram next to each activity. So 1 is for A, 2 is for B, 4 is for C, 8 is for D and so on. So just put the respective T value in the network diagram next to each activity. So we have drawn the network diagram. Next, we will find out the critical path. From the definition, critical path is the path which starts from the starting event in a network diagram and ends at the ending event and which has the maximum time duration value. So in our network diagram, the starting event is event 1 and ending event is event 8. So we have to find out all the paths starting from the starting event ending at the ending event and the path with the maximum time duration value will be our critical path. So let's find out the paths. Our first path starting from event 1 is A, D, F and J which are the total time duration value is 1 for A plus 8 for D plus 8 for F plus 10 for J. That's equals to 27. So for path A, D, F, J, the total time is 27 weeks. Our next path is B, E, F and J. So for path B, E, F, J, the total duration is 2 plus 10 plus 8 plus 10. That's equals to 30. Our next path is B, G, I and J. So for path B, G, I, J, the total duration is 2 plus 3 plus 5 plus 10. That's equals to 20. And finally, our last path is C, H, I and J. So for path C, H, I, J, the total duration is 4 plus 7 plus 5 plus 10. That's equals to 26. So among all the paths, the path B, E, F, J has the maximum time duration value of 30. So this is our required critical path. There are two techniques for finding the critical path. The first technique, which I have explained to you right now, is the shortcut technique. And the second technique is a little longer. It's called the tabular method, in which you have to construct a table like this, and from which you can get the critical path. So the tabular method I have already explained in my previous video that is critical path method example 2. So please do watch that video to know about the tabular method. So the answer of our third question is the minimum time needed to complete the project is 30 weeks. Now we'll find out the project standard deviation. So the critical path is BEFJ with duration 30 weeks. Next the variance of the project which is equals to sum of variances of all critical activities. So our critical activities are P, E, F and J along the critical path. So sum of variances for B, E, F, J is 0 0.11 plus 1 plus 1.77 plus 0. That's equals to 2.88. And the standard deviation is given by 
square root of the variance. So square root of 2.88 is equals to 1.69. That is our required standard deviation of the project. The standard deviation is very important because it tells us the amount of time our expected project duration can vary. So the standard deviation of 1.69 means our expected project duration that is 30 weeks can be plus or minus by 1.69 weeks. So this value is very important while calculating the expected project timeline. And finally, we will find out the probability that the project will be finished within 33 weeks. To find out the probability, first you have to calculate the jet score, which is given by due date minus the expected date divided by the standard deviation. Our due date is 33, expected date is 30 weeks divided by standard deviation, which is equals to 1.77. But the value 1.77 does not reveal anything. You have to compare it from the standard normal distribution table. So from the table of normal distribution for the value 1.77, here is the 1.77 value, there is 0.07. So 1.7 plus 0.07 is equals to 1.77. So this value which is at the intersection of 1.7 and 0.07 is 0.9616. So from the standard normal distribution table for Z score of 1.77, the value is 0.9616. So the required probability is 96.16%. So we can say there is 96.16% chance or probability that our project will be completed within 33 weeks. That is a very good probability which is above 95%. So friends, this was the end of my video on PERT part. How was the video? Let me know in the comments below. I will upload more videos in the series. So don't forget to subscribe to YouTube channel so that when I upload my next video, you get an email if you subscribe. And please appreciate my effort by liking and sharing the video because sharing is caring. I upload videos on statistics, numerical methods, business and financial mathematics, operation research, computer science and engineering, electrical engineering, and your app reviews, India travel videos, street foods and life hacks, and many other topics. And a series of videos showing how to use your scientific calculators, Casio FX Nanon on ES and FX82 MS calculators. You must check my calculator videos for exam. You can get all my videos on my YouTube channel. The link is www.youtube.com front slash sujayan70. So thanks for watching. See you in my next video. And still then, stay connected by subscribing.